<clears throat> Hello and welcome back to Curiously Polar, the show about all things very north and very south. My name is Chris Marquardt and with me, as usual, is Henry. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you, Chris? I'm doing wonderful. It's fun how we look in the video, how, how we look. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at my speakers right now, <laughs> pretending that's you there. The things I'm you do a with bit social more distancing. Sophisticated. I have a screen there and you are actually on the screen, so I look at you. <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> Yeah, we have we're having a ton of fun recording video here. Yeah, we, we this is our second try. We tried yesterday, but there was a thunderstorm on <laughs> uh, on your end, um, which was was giving us a lot of atmosphere, but that was not helping. <laughs> so um, uh, whoever is listening to this is probably not interested in that. But in what we are going to talk about on this episode, we have. Um, uh we we're still we're still straying from the audio path from the music path we we had kind of promised that we wanted to uh continue the music episodes in the music of the arctic but it, it was not meant to be in the pipeline it's uh, still in progress but as we are told so many times and we can just repeat it it's not the easiest task to actually clear the the rights to use some audio and we just decided it's not much fun to talk about um, music of indigenous people mm -hmm. and um, contemporary music of certain uh, local groups. If we can't just give you a, a little example of that, and um, someone these examples is just uh, hilariously. Someone exhausting. once said, "Talking about music is like dancing about architecture. There's just no point in doing it. You have to show it." Or it probably depends on which school you're in. <laughs> Okay. Podcast. <laughs> yeah. Let's let's uh, let's dive into today's topic. In today's, um, uh, it's not a backup topic. It's one that we wanted to do anyway. And you have uh, this is the best preparation ever. The list of things I'm looking at right now. I have to say that um, in our internal document where we plan things, um, I have rarely seen a, a, a show as well prepared as this one. I'm not. I'm not saying you're a bad preparer. Not at all. Where uh, usually, bad but but um, usually I I don't get to see the things in as much detail. So um, this is uh, because this is I remember when we started working together, uh, you told me you just like to have a headline and um, to be just unbiased and then just dive into the topic, which helps often. Yes. Which is a very good reason for me being lazy and not sharing the information I <laughs> collected to prepare. An you episode, know, so. you know, I see myself as um, in this show. I see myself as a stand-in for the audience because you are clearly the expert. You know all these things. Um, you know where to research and how to research these things. And I'm usually the 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 proxy for the audience going. Oh, ah, and and <laughs> trying to <laughs> trying to make sense of things. So, um, uh, but today I could I could probably do this episode on my own. So let's see. <laughs> Possibly, yeah. <laughs> um, the uh, title is "New Islands in the Arctic." Um, what does that? I mean, new islands. <laughs> Uh, how how do what new islands mean? well okay an island is probably a mass of land um, that is above the waterline i would think i'm i'm pretty sure there is a definition for island that's a very precise um definition actually <laughs> a, well is there, is there like a, a a time frame like does it have to be above the waterline for more than i don't know 50 percent of the time of, of what time, when does then? when does an island become an island <clears throat> Um, that's a very good question. But for for example, when we have a look at Sertse Island, which is south mm -hmm. of the Westman Islands in Iceland, um, that emerged through a volcanic eruption in the seventies, um, and half of the island, almost half of the island, has been eroded since then by the ocean again. So mm -hmm. the island is shrinking uh, significantly. So we have a very active geology there and possibly uh, a new eruption coming up at some point soon and just ex extending uh, enlarging the island again mm -hmm. so there 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 are possibly very clear uh, definitions but that's not so much what we want to focus on today okay. i would more, more like focus on um recent discoveries and that's kind of um 
connected to two topics. One is that the the heroic time of exploration in the Arctic has passed for a long time. So when we talk about um, Arctic exploration, we think about heroic people like Roald Amundsen or uh, Benjamin Franklin or uh, probably Alfred Wegener. But nowadays, uh, exploration is a little bit less obvious. Um, so when new islands are discovered nowadays, then that is kind of a big news in uh, the circumpolar um, community. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is that uh, these particular examples we're talking about today are connected to uh, global phenomena, which is very recent, which is uh, very uh, present and um, connected to um, yeah, human behavior. And um, when we talk about that and we talk about climate change and uh, all of that will be in that episode today. Okay, so le let me... Let me ask you, how do islands form? And of course, I, I have two theories. One is that um, some tectonic activity pushes ground up above the waterline. Um, the other is that uh, the water level goes down, which exposes uh, rocks that were formerly underwater. Um, we have a third one, volcanic eruptions, for example, as we talked okay. uh, about certainty. So okay. volcanic material ejects and um, accumulates um, so it breaches through the uh, surface of the water and then you have new islands. Mm -hmm. And the one we are talking about today is particularly special to the Arctic. So what do we have in the Arctic that um, dominates major landscapes and is uh, different from other regions in the world? Ice. Exactly. So but, connect but, but, glo but, but global warming, climate change, um, isn't that supposed to rise the water level? Yes and no, but um, in the first place, the ice coverage, the uh, the, the layers of ice laying on um, the topography is retreating much, much quicker than the water level rises. At the same time, when the glaciers disappear, a huge weight just gets lifted from the from the from the surface from the earth oh. so the, the 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 earth crust is a little bit like the surface of a football um so the glaciers are actually pushing it in indenting it and when the glaciers disappear the weight just disappears so um the crust bounces back and lifts it up and those isostatic rebound as it is called is usually much faster than the uh, rise of the ocean floor uh, of the ocean level Sea level. Okay, so what what are we talking about here? Are we talking like a, a change in a couple of centimeters a year, or is it faster? Is it more? The isostatic rebound. Yeah, it depends on on the area, but it can be uh, up to three centimeters a year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, quite a quite a lot, I would think. It depends on the on the mass that has been um, on that particular part of the crust and how fast it disappears. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it probably also depends on on the what's going on under the under the landmass, right? Yeah, th the geological setup of things. It, exactly. How yeah. thick is the crust? Um, how yeah. how uh, solid is the bedrock underneath? Yeah. Okay. Sure. So, um, are there new islands in the Arctic? Are they real? There are a couple of new islands uh, discovered in a uh, time frame which we are covering today about 2015 till today. Oh, that, that recent, okay. Very, very recent. And um, we have two areas we want to look at today. One is the Russian High Arctic, which was between 2015 and 19. Mm -hmm. And 2019 and very recent in about Svalbard, which is the Arctic archipelago in uh, northern Norway. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's let's bring up a map here. Um, this is Svalbard. Exactly, and I would love to um, just start with a very very recent event, and that is um, hap or was happening on Sunday. So today is Tuesday, and um, the past Sunday, the temperatures in in Longyearbyen, which is the northernmost permanent settlement uh, in the world at about 70 80 degree north um has reached 21.3 uh, um degrees uh, 21.7 degrees celsius which is um which is unheard it, of it is unheard of exactly and uh, the last time that we had similar temperatures was 1979 roughly 40 years ago when we reached 21.3% 
uh, degrees. So we we see that the um, the temperatures measured are um, particularly strong, uh, rising. We right now are speaking about with the most recent research papers speaking about six times the speed of the rest of the world that the Arctic is um, heating up. And we have over 100 consecutive months with temperatures above normal in Svalbard, as much as 12 to 14 degrees above normal. And this is a very We're interesting... We're talking Celsius, right? Degrees Celsius, yes. exactly. And this is a particularly interesting effect because that's um, directly connected to the discovery of uh, new islands because these temperatures, they don't only melt glaciers from above, but they also uh, lead to the fact that the sea ice is disappearing. Mm -hmm. So um, we have less of the white surface on the ocean that reflects the sun and by that the heat of the sun. So instead we have the, the much darker surface of the ocean uh, which absorbs the majority of the heat of the sunlight and by that heats up the ocean and that uh, enters a vicious circle because by that the ocean gets warmer, more sea ice melts and not only the sea ice but also the glaciers that end in the ocean and those are in particular the ones we're talking about today and have a look at. But before we come to, to Svalbard I would love to um, have a look at the Russian Arctic um, around the archipelago of uh, Franz Josef Land. And we see here from um, the, uh, yeah, perfect, uh, a great map. So just to get yeah, a, let's a put little... let's put this in perspective first. So um, this is Svalbard. This yeah, up we here have a, uh, in the on middle. The left side, we have Svalbard and uh, yes. east of that, a little bit northeast, we have those uh, numerous um, scattered islands. That's the archipelago of Franz Josef Land. And south of it, we have this big stretch of an of, of island and um, that's Novaya Zemlya. Um, yeah, and we, we just start with Franz Josef Land and then come to Novaya Zemlya. So the, the retreat of a number of glaciers has led to the fact that in uh, 2018 a very young scientist in, in Russia has discovered through an, a Russian Navy mission a, a number of at least five new islands in, um, in Franz Josef Land and the largest of them is uh, uh, 54,000 square kilometers. So 54,000 square kilometers in size, that's a great, it's, a, it's a, a huge area. And in the period of 2015 to 2018, it was a total of 30 new islands. And uh, that not only happened in uh, Franz Josef Land, but also Novaya Zemlya. And that's very interesting because Novaya Zemlya for a very long time, especially the northern part of um, the island, where it was this, uh, was um, closed in, locked in by sea ice. And mm -hmm. very recently, the sea ice disappears much, much earlier in the season. And by that, leads ships into areas which they have not um, explored um, personally for a very long time. And in uh, cooperation with satellite pictures, they can actually analyze the surface uh, or the surroundings much, much more in detail. And by that, finding um, islands where, they, where, where there used to be glaciers. And if you would uh, like to swap over to, to the uh, website, I think it was Glacier Hub, where we no, have this one. <clears throat> Here we this go. one, exactly. Where you see the difference between uh, 1990 and uh, 2016. And those red and yellow arrows, they um, indicate certain uh, features in the topography. And you can actually see on, on that perspective, it doesn't look like the, the glacier retreated that much, except for the, the big bay in the So the blue the thing, the blue thing we're looking at is the glacier. The bright blue and the dark blue, almost a uh, black one, that's the ocean. Uh -huh. And you can see that the... Oh, I um, see now, okay. The pen in peninsula is um, much, much more exposed with a uh, red arrow um, um, almost at the top of the picture. 
Uh, this is much more exposed and it reveals a lot of tiny little islands. And just look at the, the red arrow at the bottom of the picture. You see this uh, bay gets bigger, much more um, ice-free water. And in the ice-free water, you can see little dots and those little dots are actually islands and you've given the scale five kilometers which is uh, roughly two centimeters here on, on that um, graphic so the the scale gives you an idea how large those islands actually are and between the uh, bottom red and yellow arrow you have this um, your very clearly uh, visible island which almost looks a little bit like um, elephant island in Antarctica hmm. so that's uh, yeah I would say roughly a kilometer length in length that tiny little island and this is this is 26 years between those two pictures 1990 and 2016 so that is a very dramatic change in an extremely short time looking at geological time scales indeed yes and um at the same mission um those ships went actually to Novaya Zemlya where they discovered that uh, one of the glaciers, the Nansen Glacier, actually retreated quite a lot and revealed a couple of um, islands in an area between the North Island and the South Island. So there is a very, very small Let's bring channel. That up here. No, that's that's uh, Spitsbergen. When you, oh. uh, if you could could go to the, the map, yes, yeah. to that map. So it, it looks like one big island, but it's actually in fact two islands. As you can see, you have two names on on that um, piece, and they got separated, or they are separated by a very very small strait, and that small strait is um, now um, for a long, much longer time uh, ice free. And the uh, Nansen Glacier is actually fairly uh, close to that. Exactly, that's the strait. And revealed a number of, of islands. So three of them have been uh, documented and clearly identified. Uh, five of them have clearly identified in uh, 2018. And that was big, big news. Or 2019, sorry. Um, has been big, big news all around the globe. And in the show notes of that episode, you will find a couple of links to um, media outlets everywhere uh, around the globe. Because as we introduced, the time or the era of heroic expedition has passed for a long time. So if you have new discoveries in that scale, that is something really, really um, exciting for geologists, but also for um, geo uh, geopolitical scientists. Uh, it's, um, it's really interesting to see how the landscape is forming. And it is an indication of what is happening with our climate. So it is interesting on the one hand, but um, should clearly give us some, some thought on the other hand, I guess. Exactly. And from that, I would love to uh, jump to Svalbard. And um, yeah, can yeah. you put up the map we, we started with in the of very first place? Perfect. And, and the, at, the, at the top of the picture in the um, north, northeast, um, you have North Islanded, the, the second largest island of the archipelago. And you have the Hinlopen Street that's separating the big island of Spitsbergen and North Islanded. And at the um, junction of Wallenbergfjorden and Hinlopen Strait, you have a tiny little headland, which used to be a headland or recognized as a headland, which was called Bragnaset. What is a, um, a headland? Just a quick explanation. It's a it's a peninsula that reaches um, out into the ocean. Okay. So that's um, significantly higher than than the um, ocean surface, mm -hmm. and we have a had had a, two glaciers which um, actually um, encircled that uh, headland, uh, Bragabrin and uh, Gimlebrin, and those glaciers have just retreated that much in two thousand nineteen that. Norwegian researchers discovered that this headland actually is not a headland, but an island. And it created an island of approximately 10 square kilometers. So that's, that's not a, small, no? That's, that's not small, and that's a, a new discovery over there. But that's still not the mind-boggling one. So that's small scales. And if we go further south in Spitsbergen, to the southernmost um, part of it, you see... Down here, um, underneath uh, Toral land, you see Sir Cap land, the South Cap 
land. And you can see horns and um, just cutting into the landmass there. And if you would swap to the uh, very last picture we have, yes, perfect. You see that there is a very narrow um, connection between Circup land and um, Toral land. And there is an arrow here that indicates the, the glaciers, uh, Hornbrain and Hambergbrain. And those glaciers are coming down from uh, Spitsbergen and from Circup land. And on the inside of Hornsund, so towards the west, it's called Hornbrain. Towards the Barents Sea, towards the east, it's called Hambergbrain. And those glaciers has been, have been identified in uh, 2000. Uh, 19 by Polish researchers who have the, a research station for over 20 years in Hornsund and they analyzed the topography under the glacier and they figured out that the topography, the entire topography in a extension of the Hornsund is laying significantly under sea level with no clear obstacle. So if those glaciers would disappear the sea would just go in and would cut off Circup land from Spitsbergen and form a new island. There's one more ways to make a new island by just um, breaking one off of, a, of another one and then you make, it, make two of them. Exactly, and you have two factors coming in here. One is the glacial erosion that um, possibly has just carved out the topography um, that connected Circup land and, and Spitsbergen. And the other one is the warming oceans. So what we can, um, if, yeah, what, what can see in the change of the uh, ocean on both the Greenland Sea and the Barents Sea is that both oceans uh, warm up significantly, and the um, the culture of the Barents Sea changes a lot from an Arctic ecosystem to an Atlantic ecosystem. So basically, the types of fish which are origin to the Atlantic Ocean they are traveling further north. And we talked about that in, in past episodes already a few times. But this also carries warmer waters, of course. And those warmer waters, they um, attack or melt down glaciers which have their grounding line under the water level, of course, much, much quicker. And that's actually exactly what happens here. So on one side, the Barren Sea is uh, warming up and attacking Hamburg Brain. On the other side, the side you have the uh, warmer currents from the last remains from the Gulf Stream coming up on the west coast of Spitsbergen, entering Hornsund and also um, melting um, Hornbrain. So we have a meltdown from both sides and the uh, Polish researchers give a time estimate for, uh, of, a, of, a, of not that much uh, years actually. So they expect this glacier to disappear at about 2050, 2055, which is not that far away actually. Hmm. And then there is no way to walk from one side to the other. No, then we actually have a, a new yeah. island, which um, immediately would become the fourth largest island of the entire archipelago. This is crazy. So we are live watching a new island form. Indeed. Hmm. Living geology. But but at a time scale that is not geological at all. Indeed. Yeah. Okay. So um yeah, I I guess that's all we can say. Or do we have do we have anything big to learn from that other than climate change is making this possible? One thing we can learn from that is we see here clear indicators of uh, human impact and that comes um, very handy into place when we when we talk to to critics of um, human induced climate change. Mm -hmm. um, all the results in the study of those two glaciers of that ecosystem in Hornsund, but also in Kongsfjorden, which is further north in, in, in Svalbard, they indicate that the ecosystems are changing rapidly on a time scale never proven before. And we see here a very clear human impact. And that's a, a, a very interesting um, takeaway because uh, you still uh, face discussions with people who still say, yeah, there might be a change, but there's no proof that it's man-made. This is proof, pretty much. This is proof, a, a very visual proof. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, I think that's, that's a good takeaway. That's that's helpful. Um, 
All right, uh, we have talked about a lot of things. We've shown you a lot of things. Um, we have links to all of these in our show notes. Um, so if you're listening to this, just tap. If you're watching the video, just uh, look in the description. And if you're listening to this and are curious about what the video looks like, then um, there's a link to the video in the description as well. Uh, we'll be back next um, no, not next week. Next time. <laughs> Being un unspecific <laughs> on purpose here. I think in two weeks. Um, you can, uh, in the meanwhile, look at our webpage at curiouslypolar.com. We are Curiously Polar on Twitter and on Insta. And uh, we look forward to having you back. Until then, take care and bye-bye.